Red alarm for all fans of Apple computers, Apple Silicon, M2, M1, and so on. If you wanna buy a brand new MacBook right now, hold your horses. I know it may sound ridiculous, but Apple is getting ready to surprise us again. And right now, as I'm telling you this, the world's first three nanometer chips are being produced at the TSMC factory. What is it? Why should we care? And why M2 is not the real M2 chip? I'm excited, hope you're excited too, and let's get into the video. Okay, let's get to the bottom of what 3 nanometers is and why it's so important these days. Sure, you know that all processors in general are created using a certain process technology. For example, the current M1 chips are created using the 5 nanometer process starting from 2020. Before that, in 2018, 7 nanometers. And as you can see, this technology is developing exponentially like almost any other technology in our world today. I know it's boring, but I'll explain it anyway because, because it's important, okay? So listen. This is the particular manufacturing method used to make silicon chips, which is measured by the size of the transistor's elements. The driving force behind the design of integrated circuits is miniaturization, and process technology boils down to the never-ending goal of make it smaller. As transistors get smaller, they switch faster and use less energy. Smaller also means more computing power per square inch that can be placed into ever tighter quarters. So what does this mean for Apple Silicon? M1, M1 Pro, and in general, the entire line of new Apple processors. This means that we are in the transition from 5 nanometers to 3 nanometers, and just a few days ago, the news broke all over the media that the M2 Pro and M2 Max and all future modifications of Apple's chips could be developed using the 3 nanometer process technology. Mac rumors claim that TSMC will begin production of 3 nanometer chips for Apple by the end of 2022, according to a report this week from Taiwan's Commercial Times. A separate report from the publication claimed that TSMC will begin mass production of 3 nanometer chips in September. What does that mean? It means that the M2 Pro will A, become more power efficient, B, more powerful in general. And if we turn to history just a month ago when Apple presented the base M2 chip, we were not that surprised by the 10% performance increase compared to the last generation M1. However, 10% is still better than zero. Let's be honest, before the M1 release, did you have the feeling that the development and progress of technology had slowed down. We don't take smartphones into account, although everything has stagnated there as well. Just compare iPhone 10, 10s, 11. I wouldn't say that progress is comparable to the iPhone 4, 5, or 6, for example. And with the release of the M1, everyone was shocked by what Apple has managed to implement. And something tells me that the competitors are not really trying to participate in this race. Intel, AMD are also trying to improve power efficiency of mobile processors. AMD specifically but when it comes to almost a full day of use with incredible performance, Apple has no competitors. Although, wait a minute, Apple has raised expectations so high that now at every Apple event they need to outdo themselves. Remember all the YouTubers, including me, screaming that the M2 is only 10% faster? And all these cries came out why? Because with the release of the first sort of a test M1 chip, Apple set the bar so high that it seemed that now every year they would show some something revolutionary. And they were. The M1 Pro and Max are some kind of monsters in terms of performance. After all, the M1 Ultra is two chips in one chip. What other company in the world can afford to combine two very powerful chips in a flagship line? Intel? AMD, and now if Apple manages to move to those magic 3 nanometers, it will be very difficult to catch up with them. TSMC will produce 30 to 50,000 chips per month using the 3 nanometer process, and Apple will probably release an iPad with 3 nanometer chip as early as this year, but iPhones will probably get a platform using the new technology in 2023, so A17 Bionic. TSMC expects that the new process technology can improve performance by 10 to 15 percent compared to 5 nanometers while reducing power consumption by 25 to 30 percent. So as I said before, longer battery life and we'll get a lot more power than before. And jumping ahead a little bit, the company said that already in 2024 there will be a new factory in a test format for the production of processors with the 2 nanometer process technology in 2025. That's where something incredible awaits us. But for now, let's get back to our topic. The 
upcoming M2 Pro. But before that, very important, we are hiring. Our team is expanding and right now we're looking for YouTube script writers. You must have a knowledge of Apple technology and technology in general, be aware of what's going on in the tech world and a desire to create awesome YouTube content. Of course, not for free. In order for your application to be considered, you need to write a script, a one to two pages script about your personal experience with your favorite device. Any device, really. MacBook, iPhone, or even AirPods. Doesn't matter. The main thing, it has to be interesting to read, interesting to listen, and interesting to watch. Keep in mind that your script is a future YouTube video. So avoid a scientific writing style. It doesn't have to sound like an article from the internet. But it does have to sound like a real human explaining something in simple words with jokes and real-life examples. And also describe your experience as a script writer. If you've already created YouTube scripts, that's awesome. If not, just describe your experience, what you do, and your portfolio. So basically, we're looking for someone with YouTube experience and a passion for technology. Send us the test script to this email, and in the subject line, put AW job application, followed by a vertical line, followed by your first and last name. In the body of your email, at the top, again, put your first and last name. Then give us some information about yourself and attach a document document, which is the test script you've created. And that's it. Have fun with it and good luck. Okay, so based on info from Meng Chi Kuo, Apple probably won't release the new 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros using the 3 nanometer processor. And that, unfortunately or fortunately, seems to be true. Sure, TSMC has started producing chips for Apple and yeah, claims are 30 to 50,000 units per month. However, TSMC CEO said not to expect revenue from 3 nanometer until 2023 which means it won't ship to customers until then. The wafer cycle time is more than three months, so even if TSMC started today, they wouldn't be able to ship packaged and tested chips until next year. Consequently, we should draw one simple conclusion. Three nanometers will come out, but later. Does this mean we should expect the five nanometer M2 Pro and Max? And what should we expect from the new MacBook Pros in general? Let's start with the design. I wouldn't expect a drastic change in the next generation. 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pro. We know that Apple sticks to one design for several years and given that the new Pros have only recently been updated, I'd say the design won't change at all. Perhaps new finishes, adding something fresh to the new products, but that's just my guess. Much has been said about the chips themselves in this video, but nevertheless, Apple is rumored to use the M2 Pro and M2 Max chips in updated MacBook Pro models. According to Bloomberg's Mark Gurman, the M2 Max chip will offer up to 12 cores in the processor as well as up to 38 core GPU. The M2 Max will support up to 64 GB of unified memory. German didn't share details about the M2 Pro, but it will certainly be less powerful than the M2 Max. Will there be a modification with the M2 Ultra in the laptop? I think it's not worth dreaming about because such a huge processor requires huge cooling. And I think it's almost impossible today. Apple is working on OLED displays for future devices, including MacBook Pro models. Some rumors suggest that Apple could introduce OLED displays as early as 2022, but other rumors suggest that OLED displays won't appear until 2024. So whether there will be an upgraded display in the new products remains to be seen. There have also been rumors that Apple is working on Face ID for Macs, and the 14-inch and 16-inch MacBook Pro models will be prime candidates for the technology, but unfortunately there is still no further details on when Face ID will appear on Max, or if it will appear at all. Please, Apple, show us the reason for the notch at the top of the screen. Okay, so is it worth buying a MacBook today? Let's think logically. MacBooks with the M1 Pro and M1 Max are already quite powerful computers. Three nanometers is indeed a breakthrough. However, this breakthrough will most likely not happen this year. Consequently, your wait could be delayed for next year. And guided by the fact that the M1 was introduced in 2020, the M1 Pro Max in 2021, the M2 in 2022, and they haven't upgraded the iMac and Mac Mini. I think in October we'll most likely see an iPad and some other Macs with the M2, and already next year the updated M2 Pro Max 
and Ultra ships. And if we believe the rumors, maybe even M2 Extreme. But that's another story. So if you need an Apple computer right now, buy it. It's a great computer for a great price. If you have time to wait and you want the greatest new and powerful chip, you can wait, of course wait for your entire life. And what do you think? How will Apple develop the power of their computers? Personally, when working on a 16-inch MacBook Pro, I didn't find myself needing more CPU, more GPU. Of course, the sky is the limit, but we get a lot of options on the market, and it's more than enough for each and every user, whether you are an engineer or a 3D artist. But let's be honest, it's getting more and more interesting to follow Apple. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, then also go ahead and click on this video and this one, and see you in the next one.